Hey guys, it's Leo with Dreaming Tree, and in this video we're going to put together our Easter egg box card. And as you can see here in front of me, we've got the finished version that we're actually going to assemble in the video. Um, it's great for Easter, for spring, um, very colorful, not a lot of pieces as far as paper goes. Um, there's a lot of little intricate details, but it's very simple to put together. I'm going to walk you through it step by step, so you have nothing to fear. Um, show you a little bit about um, pop dotting to add dimension as well as um, training and pinching some of the leaves and stuff like that just to kind of give it even more depth. Um, so it's a very simple card. Um, give yourself about 30 minutes for assembly. Uh, pick out your papers, you know, have fun making it super colorful and um, also comes with this envelope. Obviously we've got a beautiful little um, tulip motif on here to complement the card itself so the recipient um, will love it from the moment they actually see it before they actually even see the card. So um, I have everything I need ready to go so let's go ahead and get started. Okay so let's go ahead and take a look at all of the pieces for our box card. Now I have some stuff pre-laid out because I want to show you how and where all the pieces go. So let's go ahead and begin with um, the frontmost inner layer or insert and as you can see here we've got this piece here that we've cut out in a pink we're gonna put this layer on top here like so and then we're gonna put this layer on top here like that okay so that is going to complete this layer here. So you're going to want to glue that in place like so. Okay, so just make sure that you get your glue in there nicely so that the whole thing sits nice and flush. And then we'll take this egg and I'm going to work on the inside first by just putting little dots in here and then a nice, really thin line around the edge dots on the inside and then do your best to get that nice and lined up. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next insert and this is the second layer here. Okay, so what I'm going to suggest we do actually is, well, let's work on, let's work on this egg first or this little egg shape here. Okay, so we're going to take this egg and as you can see here, see that little notch right there? That is a continuation of that little petal right there. So we want to make sure that we get that glued down in place correctly first. And then again, do your best to line that up so that we have that continuation on that little petal there. Okay, that looks great. And then we can go ahead and take our glue and apply it to this piece here. That should just kind of fit like a little puzzle up against our other piece there. And then we have the little inner piece with the stamen. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece to the other piece first. Just one little dot is probably enough. I'm just going to glue that in the center there. Okay, and then what I want to do is actually pop dot that dot. Basically just enough to cover that background there. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop that right in the center of our flower just to give it some little added dimension. You can see the little shadow that it casts there. Okay, so once we have that in place, we can go ahead and glue this down. So let's go ahead and put glue. I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the background. Just kind of keep it. Okay, and just match that up as precisely as you can. It might help to pick it up and kind of run your fingers along the edges there. 
And then we have a little tulip. And what we're gonna do with this guy here is we are going to pop dot that like so, but we need to build it first. So I have this little piece that's gonna get glued flush onto my green backing. So I'm just putting glue on that. Okay, and then to add a little bit of dimension to this, I'm gonna go ahead and peel up a little more of a zot, just a tiny little bit. These things are really, really sticky. And I'm just gonna pop that right in the center of this little piece here. And just make sure that the bottom is kind of flush with the bottom there. Okay, so we can just apply that like that. Okay, so that gives that some nice dimension there, as you can see. And then we're actually going to also 3D zot this in place here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and just peel off some more zot and just pop it on the back of this thing here. I wanna put it in some of the larger areas. Okay, so I've got one there, I've got one there, and I'm gonna just put one more in this little area here. And then we can go ahead and take the entire flower and just using the tips of the tulip as a guide, I'm gonna go ahead and place that on this piece here. So we've got two of the layers assembled here, okay? And we can go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, so let's take a look at our back layer here. And I already have it sort of laid out here. And what we're gonna do is this white piece here. I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna glue that on flush. So I'm just putting just a few drops. I don't like to use lines on little pieces like this because I tend to get way too much glue when I use lines and I don't like that. So I'm just putting little dots on there. Okay, so that's sitting nice. Okay, we'll grab our other little white piece and just apply some dots and get that glued in place. There we go. Okay, and for the um, little purple pieces that go over it, you can glue that down or you can zot it. I'm gonna grab another zot. I really wanna add a lot of dimension to this. So I am gonna use um, a zot and I've kind of, kind of got like a, a little wormy sized zot that I'm going to just kind of stretch across this little piece here so that it sits nice and evenly when I put it down. Okay, because the idea is to kind of create this look here. I'll show you here in a second. You kind of want it to reveal a little bit of that white behind it, as you can see there, okay? And it's giving it a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this piece here. Okay. Just gonna take and Oh, that zot was way too small to work with. That's the cool thing about the zots is you can pull them apart and just add as much or as little as you want. Okay. And then we're just gonna pop that right on there. Okay, so you see how that looks. Okay, and then we have um, a couple tulips that we want to also uh, glue down. So this pink piece, that is actually gonna get glued flush. So I am just gonna go ahead and I can do a very thin line on this. It's got enough surface area here to where I think I can get away with it. Okay. And then just match it up with the little silhouette in the green there, okay. Get that glued down. And then we have one more little tulip. OK, 
Okay, and that is going to get glued down right here. So go ahead and put your glue on this tulip here. And yeah, there it goes right there. Okay, and then we're gonna put our little dimensional pieces in place as well, and we are going to also zot those because we wanna give this thing some nice dimension. So we've got a nice generous piece of zot there at the bottom, the base of that thing that's nice and thick. And then another one just to kind of keep it nice and even. And I'm going to go ahead and align that with the bottom. There we go. And let's flip this guy over. Grab a little bit of a zot there. There we go. And a little more just before the tip there. go. These get a little sticky to work with, but you get used to it. Okay. There's our Zot. And we've got some nice, really nice dimension on there too. Okay, so for our little daffodil on this layer here, you're going to want to find the one that has um, slightly rounder tips. Okay, and we do want to sort of um, train it a little bit. Okay, and what we're gonna do, and do your best, because it is a kind of a small piece, but um, kind of push in the center there so that you can kind of crease it. Okay, and you wanna just pinch right at the tip just to kind of give it that kind of look, okay? Don't overdo it, because it might crease it too much, but start by applying pressure in the center to help with the pinching and then just kind of pinch it at the tip like that. Okay, and that's just gonna kind of give it a little more interest and dimension so that it's not all too flat because that's not, our flowers need to have a little bit of life in them. Okay, so we're just gonna pinch that just like that and just work your way around. Take your time. And just pinch. You can actually kind of push them out a little bit too. Make them stand out from the back. Just like that. And just push them out a little. And again, I'm kind of using my thumb and my nail to kind of create um, a lot of pressure there in the middle so that it folds in the center. Okay, and then we're just gonna crease it like that. And you can lift it out. So it does help to have nails because it really gives you a very specific um, pressure area, I guess. It really kind of concentrates the pressure you're applying with your thumb. Okay, so that's kind of what we want the flower to look like. You see how it transformed a bit compared to our flat guy. He looks a lot more interesting. Okay, so we are going to take him or her and we are going to glue this piece down. Okay, and it doesn't really matter which way it goes. So he's gonna get glued down flush but then the stamen pieces, we are going to use pop dots on to give it some dimension, okay? So I'm just kind of pushing that down, just making sure that it gets a good grip. And you can see how that's starting to turn out. It's looking very nice, okay? So grab, grab your stamen. These are very small pieces, so if you can, Go ahead and try to curl the stamen out a little bit just to kind of give that some added dimension. And we'll just put a little dot of glue in the center here. 
And I'm going to grab a little pop dot for the back of this. Just make sure that it's smaller than the dimension of that piece there. And go ahead and just apply that to the center of the flower. Okay, so there you have it. That is your backmost layer. And if you want, you can grab a little skewer and curl some of these, curl some of these leaves so that they're not just sticking up straight. I'll get my skewer here at the end when we start doing some embellishing and we'll kind of jazz it up even more. Okay, so we have uh, all the layers here. Now, this daffodil that goes on the front of the card, okay, you're gonna wanna do the same thing with that. The little pinch method, okay? So just do your best to kind of pinch the tip there like that. It's a little difficult sometimes because they are small pieces, but it can be done. Okay, and again, just kind of push it out towards you to give it a little more life. Okay, so here is the front and the sides of our card, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply these pieces like so, okay? Just like that, and then we actually wanna put these pieces on top, okay? So don't put them underneath, put them on top, and just get those glued into place. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll go ahead and continue with the next step. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, as you can see here, I've got these panels in place. Just make sure that when you lay this down, you have a nice even border going all the way around, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this tab to this side here, and then that tab to the other side there. And I'm actually gonna leave this flat because I'm gonna use my table as um, leverage and also I think it's gonna help me um, ensure that I've got it lined up properly. So I'm just getting that glue out to the edge there. And as you can see, we've got this little curve there or that angle, okay? And I wanna go ahead and just make sure that that angle is flush with the angle of that back layer. Okay, so I'm just gonna push and hold that down for a second. Just make sure that it gets a good grip. Should be pretty flush. Make sure that it's nice and aligned down here so that that edge is flush as well. Okay, and just be patient while that dries. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it like this. Okay, and then we're gonna tuck that tab under and glue that down. And that's just gonna make sure that this thing folds nice and flat for us. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put some glue on this tab here. Okay, and just fold that over, get that glue off my fingers, and go ahead and push that down, making sure that's nice and aligned. Make sure that it's nice and flush at the bottom as well, and that it's folding nice and flat. Okay and just be patient while that dries. And as you can see, the card is completely flat right now. And it will continue to stay that way as we add our little inserts. Okay, so there's the card right now. It's shaping out, looking really cute so far. Okay, and what we can go ahead and do is put our first insert in. Okay, so this insert it's gonna go in here like this, okay? And then this insert is gonna go in here like this, okay? So that is what your card is gonna look like. So just keep in mind that with this one, you have your design here. These little tabs are gonna be facing away from you, okay? So what I'm actually gonna do, instead of trying to do two at a time here, I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on just this tab here. Don't get too much on there, don't cake it. Okay, I'm gonna slide it in. I'm gonna push it back. Okay, I'm gonna get my finger in there and make sure that it's sitting flat on the table. 
Okay, just get your finger in there and make sure it's pushed back all the way. And as it's drying, go ahead and fold it so that it's flat and make sure that it's aligned at the bottom. Okay, open it up real quick. Make sure it's still hitting the back of the card there. Okay, and it is. Give it a few seconds to set. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some glue on the remaining tab here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of bend this a little bit and just get a little bit of glue in there. If you feel more comfortable doing both tabs at the same time, you can. I just kind of would rather work with one at a time. Okay, so I have it flat on my table. I'm pushing this tab back. Okay, and I'm kind of watching up at the top as well, just to make sure that that's not protruding. Okay, I'm gonna let it get an initial grip while I push down here, just to make sure that that tab is hitting the back. Okay, I'm gonna flip it up just to make sure that that is sitting nicely on my table, and it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold this over and just push down. Just make sure that that is nice and aligned down there. Okay, so there we go. Got that layer in place. Okay, so before we put this front layer in place, we've got some little dots here. Now you can leave them um, as is if you want, but what I'm gonna actually do is I'm going to put some little purple-ish, pastel purple pearls on there, and I've got my Silhouette Pick Me Up tool. And um, one little tip that, uh, well, these didn't really have an adhesive backing, so you kind of have to glue them, but even with, even with the ones that have glue, sometimes the glue isn't really in place very well and may not hold very well, so, um, Ron recommended that we glue everything. So that's kind of what I've been doing. So I got the little sticky part of my pick-me-up tool. I just use that to pick it up. And I just dip it in a little tiny little bit of glue just to make sure that there's some glue on there and put it in place and then use the other part of the pick-me-up tool to um, let it go. This is that little pick-me-up tool and it's got this little cool little thing on the back of it. So let that dry. Just pick it up, dip it in a tiny little bit of glue. You don't really need that much because if you put too much on there it will potentially cake out and smear and you don't want that. So you can kind of flatten it out before you apply it. Okay, just like that. Okay, so we can go ahead and put this piece into our card. I'm gonna go ahead and fold the flaps in and apply glue. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on both sides. And then I'm gonna take this and just kind of bend it slightly. Maybe grab it like that. And just pop it in. Try not to get any glue on the sides. And then fold those flaps over and just make sure that they're butting up against the front of the card and just hold it down for a few seconds while it gets its initial grip. And then once it does, you can go ahead and begin folding it to really get that glue to stick like so, okay? So you can go ahead and push down now and get that glue to really stick. Okay, and you want to fold it both ways just to ensure that it folds nicely. There we go. Okay, so we pretty much have the card completed with the exception of our little front layer here. So we're going to go ahead and put that down. So I'm just going to lay the card flat for now. The way that this goes on is like this, okay? And we want, we, we don't really wanna see any of the purple showing through here. We wanna get that covered up as nicely as we can. So we are gonna put glue on the actual backing layer, uh, but before we do that, and actually, you know what, we can do that now. It may be easier to work with. 
Okay, and I'm just gonna put a nice line of glue right at the top there. Okay, and I'm gonna fold this flat. It's easier to work with when it's flat. And again, just make sure that you've got the purple pretty much covered up and just push and hold that in place. And just be patient while it dries. And then all that's really left to do is glue our little daffodil on here. Okay, so I'm gonna take him and place him right about there. Okay, just like that. So we're gonna glue the actual daffodil flat and flush to the green part. And then just like we did with the other daffodils, I'm gonna go ahead and pop dot the little stamen piece here. So I've got this piece here. I'm gonna glue the stamen to this piece and then we're gonna pop dot this entire piece to the actual daffodil. Okay, just like that. Okay, let's get that on the back. And just pop dot or zot that right into place. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the card. Now, if you want to take a little hibachi skewer and kind of curl the leaves a little bit, you can do the ones in the back just to kind of give them a little bit more life. You can do that. And then we can kind of flip this upside down and maybe just give these a little bit of life. Just kind of curl them against the hibachi skewer. You can feel free to wrap it around the hibachi skewer to really give it some added dimension. Like that. And just kind of pull these leaves away from the base of the card really give this thing some added life there, as you can see there. Okay, so that looks really cute. And that's pretty much it for the card. Okay, so again, the card's gonna fold nice and flat. Now let's take a look at our envelope that comes included with the card. Okay, so let's first just assemble the base of this. You've got this piece here, you wanna go ahead and fold those tabs in, okay? And we've got this piece here. This is where the card's gonna go in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this texture side down and I'm going to align it with this piece here. Just making sure that it's centered. Okay, I'm gonna fold this tab over. And actually what I like to do is get a nice line of glue out towards the edge and then use my finger to smear that glue out to the edge for two reasons. One, to get it nice and seamless, but also so that it doesn't cake up and it's not too thick. Okay, and I'm just gonna take and push that tab over to get it to set. And the more you use your table as leverage, the less creasing you're gonna get in your paper. So definitely take advantage of that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on these tabs here. And we're gonna close this up. Okay, and again, I do like to get that glue out to the edge, so I do need a little bit more there along the edge. Okay. There we go. And then you can just close that up. Should just kind of fall into place. And then just flip it over, push down, get that nice and set. Okay, we can kind of put that off to the side for a few moments while it dries so we can finish the flap. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pattern and we're gonna glue that to the inside here. Okay, so what I would do is I would begin by, uh, actually, 
I would begin by putting glue around the exterior first and then just kind of maybe add a few little dots here and there, real tiny little dots in these detailed areas and just do your best to get that centered. If it's not perfectly centered, it's okay. Okay, the idea is for that pattern to show through there. And then we've got these little green overlays and there are two little um, cutouts here that kind of show you how to position this precisely. So you can go ahead and put glue on the back of this piece here and just go ahead and lay that down. Okay. And go ahead and repeat that same process with the other piece. And again, you can see here that I'm just, I'm barely applying pressure to the bottle and just putting down a few little dots because I don't want, I don't want to go crazy with the glue on this piece here. Okay. So we've got our overlay down. That looks great. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and join this to the envelope. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down like so. Okay, so we're just gonna put glue on the back of this tab. I'm gonna feed that in like that. Actually, just go ahead and slide it in there. I suppose I could have done this first, but that's okay. Just go ahead and get it in there, get it aligned, and just push down. And make sure that it holds. And give it a few seconds to dry. And you have your pretty envelope for your super pretty box card. Okay, so just give that a few extra seconds to dry and then your card will fold nice and flat. You can open this up and pop your card in there. And it's ready to be mailed. So I hope you guys had tons of fun putting this really cute and really beautiful card together. Um, can't wait to see your version with your colors and, and your take on things. So if you do make this, I'd love to see it. Um, post a picture on our Facebook page because that seems to be where everybody is at these days. And, you know, tell us a little bit about the process and who it's for and what types of papers you used because um, everyone's dying to know what you did to make your version. So I look forward to seeing that. And I thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again next time. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www. 3dsvg.com Live, craft, love, and dream.